and welcome to another Learning From Home webinar hosted by Michigan Virtual. I'm Stacey Hsu, and in today's session, I will lead us through a conversation with educators from around the state of Michigan on the topic of engaging students when they're learning from home. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we dive into our topic for today, I wanted to be sure that you know that we have a series of these recorded webinars on learning continuity, and they're all available on the Michigan Virtual website. These are all free and I encourage everyone to visit the webpage listed below and explore the other topics we discuss related to learning continuity. And with that, I am excited to introduce our panelists for today. So first off, I'd like to welcome Dan Spencer. Dan is a science teacher and a technology integration specialist or integration coach, excuse me, at Western School District. And I'd also like to welcome Alana Perditas, a lead instructor here at Michigan Virtual. So welcome. We are happy to have you today. So diving right in, my first question. Generally, when we think about student engage it, engagement, we think about uh, the level of student interest and what they show in the topics being presented. But we also think about their interaction with that content and with others in the classroom. So learning from home presents unique challenges. And when compared to face-to-face -face environment, can you speak to some of those challenges that may be faced in a virtual learning environment? And how might you address those? So Stacy, we're we're really dealing with this right now. This is like the past month has just been been crazy. And we're going from this whole idea of having this captive audience uh, every day to now all of a sudden everybody's all over the place and, and trying to figure out how to how to be able to to accommodate all of these different situations. Because I I think like the biggest difficulty that that we've had right now is realizing that we used to have a whole lot of control and now we now we don't so the the whole idea of having this uh this, this audience right in front of me for 52 minutes a day for all of my physics classes and all of my chemistry classes and if and, and i was going to have them tomorrow and uh, i knew when i said bye on friday that i was going to see them again on monday that just isn't the case anymore um, so, and, and I'm over in the high school, so we're talking 900 kids or so. All of a sudden, we've gone from everybody being together to 900 different situations where, like, let me, for example, just in my home alone, uh, I've got me as the, as the teacher. Um, I've got, uh, my wife is working in the hospital. Um, youngest is in elementary middle kid is in middle school and oldest is in high school now i've got to do my job um, as as a teacher and also make sure that all of my kids are doing what they need to do um, so it's a it's a huge challenge for for them and uh for me as a parent and also for me as a as a teacher so one of the things that we've been talking a lot about is is this idea of of compassion over compliance and and trying to find a way to understand that in this this really difficult time we're all in different situations um and as as a teacher i need to understand that that my students are in different situations i've got some with um like financially right they're okay right now um, mom or dad are home, they've got great internet, they've got several different devices, they're gonna be okay. And I've got others that are having to walk to grandma's house just to be able to have a phone access. So I've really gotta be able to be compassionate and compliant or uh, compassionate and understand that some kids are going to be able to have an easier go of this than others. So whenever I'm creating something, I always want to make sure that it's going that that any kid can do it. Um, it's not just going to be the the kid who has internet access, but there might be somebody who, or there there might need to be a way that I can set up uh, content for them that they're not going to need to have internet access, and they're going to be able to to still show me that they understand. Um, but not necessarily the same way that every other kid explains that they understand. Um, at the same time, I also think about how I need to give myself some grace as a teacher 
and understand that this is different than than what we've typically done and that um, I need to to not expect the exact same thing that I would normally have done um, as a, a teacher with my 24 kids all all right in front of me. So we've had some similar um, challenges. I think I'm an online instructor, so my content's already there. My students have already been working in this environment, but a lot of my students were working from their brick and mortar schools online, you know, using the school equipment. So now our challenge is also taking this to their home where accessibility might not be the same, technology might not be the same. And when they were in school, they did have a mentor partner that was helping them through, you know, just being there, that face-to-face -face person. So any kind of technology hiccups, um, just skills in general, they needed help uploading or navigating uh, content online. They had that person right next to them, even when I couldn't be there. So that's been a new challenge for us. Um, I guess some of the ways that we've kind of been trying to overcome these obstacles is just doing what we can with the technology we have to create tutorials. Um, walk through, to walk students, parents through how to do some of these um, unique skills that maybe they weren't aware of. And then also just kind of accommodating some of the, the technology gaps um, that we're missing. So if students don't have a microphone at home, providing resources where they can record in another way um, and still get that kind of output to us as instructors. So. Thank you very much. So for educators who are new to teaching virtually, what would you suggest as a starting point to engage learners? I think my advice would be just to kind of start basic, start working on figuring out um, some of those communication styles and then also communication barriers. Um, see where your students are at. And then also continue building the relationships that you've been having with your students all year long. Um, don't lose that contact and that connection. So for us online instructors, every term, every semester, we get new students from all over Michigan. And so we kind of have to start over and, um, and meet everybody and kind of put ourselves out there. So I think that face-to-face -face teachers moving to the online environment, they kind of already have that advantage. Um, you know your students, and so you can continue to check in on them they need to know that they are loved and they are cared for right now and you have their best interests at heart and you are just going to continue doing this together. You know, this is really a in it together kind of situation. Um, and then also start building up those classroom norms, I would say. Uh, this is a new environment for everyone shifting online. So I think that just as you would have classroom norms, um, you just kind of are shifting that and you're just going to start and build the foundation so that you can start providing some good lessons, content, and really educating. You know, that that's a really important thing uh, about the whole idea of, of relationships. Um, I think for those of us who are used to the brick and mortar teaching, we've, we've had those, we've been able to develop those relationships and I think especially now with how things have shifted so much, um, kids are craving those relationships still. Like that's a sense of, of stability for them. Um, in fact, uh, a week or so ago, some of my colleagues and I, we, um, we were trying to figure out what we were gonna do with, with working through these, these challenges. And we got some of our students on a, on a call and we said, hey, what, what are you guys looking for here? And um, the thing that came up over and over again is that we want our own teachers. Like we want, if I'm in zoology, if I'm gonna be learning zoology, I want Mr. Rissy explaining that because he's who we're, who we're used to. Um, so, so those relationships are, are just enormous right now. Um, rather, like there's, there's lots of resources that are out there and that gives us a lot of flexibility to be able to, to find things that um, might be explained in a different way than we might. But I think primarily those students of ours want us. They want 
to to hear from the the people that they that they trust um and that that's huge and i think especially and i, and I don't want to be cliche about this or, at all but there's there's a little bit of of maslow before blooms here like you've got to have kids that are your students need to have things taken care of before they're going to be able to to dive into ionic bonding or um or, or um newton's laws or other things like that so i think for those of us who are all of a sudden thrust into the virtual world um it might be making those contacts first just to see how our kids are doing and along with seeing how kids are doing okay so let's figure out some things of okay what's the best way to contact you um we have the hardest time in our school getting kids to respond to emails all right but they'll but we can there's ways that through texting or other things that we get a much better response rate we've got to figure out how that kid is able to see what we're sending out um so there's there, there's some individual conversations that have to happen in order for them to be able to uh to let us know what works what works best for them thank you so dan you mentioned that there are lots of resources out there for educators and i'm sure it can be a bit overwhelming do you have any suggestions for digital tools that you would recommend when engaging students and if so how do you go about choosing these resources yeah are, it can be yeah. it, it can be a lot. Right, right. Cause you you think about how we all are after McCall or ISTE or, or something like that. And all of a sudden we've spent three glorious days seeing how everything that's out there works perfectly. And and then we're gonna and we're gonna try everything. And it just it it, it doesn't doesn't always work. Or at least it, it seems to always fail miserably whenever I try it out for the first time. Um, so so with that in mind, and also kind of going back to what we were talking about with the, with the relationships is our, our kids want to see us, they want to hear from us. Um, so so I think when it comes to to resources that come from us, from people that our, our students uh, trust, um, camera is the best thing. Like whatever you can do to get your face in front of, of a camera and explain things, that is, is really going to be something that, that kids um, do. Like, for example, I, I also am the, the cross country coach. Um, and uh, so I had, oh, this, this is just heartbreaking. I had, we were gonna have a really good season this year in track. All right. And now all of a sudden that's that's no longer available. Well, how knowing that it's going to be six months until cross country officially starts, how do I keep connecting? Well, I what I'm, one of the things that I'm trying to do is is get myself in front of my, uh, my my phone every morning and in like a minute, minute and a half explain. All right, gang, this is what we're going to do today. Um, this, is, this is my little inspirational message or, or whatever it happens to be. But I've heard back from a lot of parents who have said, thank you for doing that. It, it might seem like a little thing to you, but it means a lot to us because they're, they're seeing once again that it's, that it's you, somebody that they trust. So as a teacher, I think, okay, well, this is where I really get to, to have some fun with this, okay? And, and I'm channeling my inner Ben Rhymes here who is awesome at going around and finding random things out there and saying, hey, this is exactly how it, or here's my, my video story problem, all right? I wanna, I, I just found this. Here, I'm setting up the situation. Now you figure out how this, this works. Um, and, and those little 30 second to a minute clips are fantastic. They're great hooks. They get things, uh, that, that kids really, um, get excited about. Um, for those of you who are, um, science people, Tom Kunselman at Spring Arbor University is going through, um, and every day he's doing like an online demonstration 
or an online uh, like science project or, or demo or things like that. There's people that are working their tails off all over the place to, to create those. Um, so along with the, uh, with the, uh, your, your phone uh, camera, I'm thinking screencasts, things like that, that allow you to, in those situations where a camera isn't going to be able to take care of everything, where you could explain things a little more in depth as a, as a teacher. I could not agree more with the video lessons and just making those connections. I think that that is so powerful. My daughter's in kindergarten and she used Flipgrid. We just did it for fun to send a video to her, uh, her teacher, kindergarten teacher, not a lot of you know, online instruction <laughs> experience. And so she recorded one back and sent it to my daughter and she had me play it over and over again. The kids, they, they miss their teachers, they miss each other. Um, they just wanna communicate in this, you know, new weird, weird world that we have going on. Um, I think one of my favorite screencasting and video recording tools right now is Loom, L-O-O-M. So Loom, it's, it's free. Actually, teachers and students both get the pro version for free for life right now, just in the midst of everything. So that's a great one, not, not only for providing lessons, and you can do that you know, with the background, with slides, a presentation, you can get creative um, and you know, use like a document camera, kind of use your phone as a document camera and handwrite stuff, or you can just be yourself um, and provide a lesson. But you also can have students produce work and share it back to you. There's no downloads, there's no uploads. They literally just get in front of a, a phone or a computer, record, and then that can be their way to share their mastery understanding of a concept. Or in my case, you know, I teach world languages. So they can, you know, do a presentation in the target language and send that back to me. So just getting creative with both how you can teach using the videos and then how you can also use that as an outcome for them to submit to you. Um, Flipgrid is also great for collaboration and discussions. Um, I could see it being used in the younger classrooms when my daughter is not able to read yet. She's in kindergarten, but you know what she can do? She can hold up a phone and she can talk and then that can be used as like a commenting feature uh, for students. And again, with language implications, that's a quick way to keep that that conversation kind of going. Um, some other tools that we use a lot for engagement in our online courses, Padlet, another good discussion tool. So students can post images, videos, text, but you can ask those open questions that maybe you would have a discussion, a classroom discussion on or a debate, and you can start this commenting. And there are in all of these different tools that moderating um, button that you can turn on. If you don't want students posting at all hours, whatever they want, and you want to at least be able to moderate and look over some of that, you can do that. There are these settings. So there are lots of tools, resources out there. Um, I guess as far as how to choose which tool to use for, you know, what objective, I think I would look at the lesson as a whole and what you're trying to achieve. Um, is it something that you want students to complete on their own and send to you? Maybe it's written. Google Docs would probably be very powerful. It allows you to comment directly on there. And now you're having that kind of personalized feedback for your students. Um, or maybe it is something like a Flipgrid or a Padlet where you want it posted for the entire class to see. So that would have been something like, you know, your normal face-to-face -face lesson or discussion. Um, and then that's all out there. So you just kind of have to pick and choose what tool you're looking for based on the objective that you're trying to achieve for that particular lesson and go from there. So this next question is a little bit selfish on my end because I'm a parent right now who is also an educator and it is vastly different learning from home and working from home. And so, I wanna ask both of you as parents and educators, do you have any tips or suggestions for keeping kids engaged while they're learning from home? 
This so is a struggle at our house. It, you know, and I only have the kindergartner that's doing and a preschooler that are trying to do the online education. So um, as far as keeping them engaged, we have to have a pretty um, structured routine of when it's going to be kind of that quiet educational time, um, get them set up with all the equipment that they need in front of them. And, you know, whether that's the crayons and the paper, the headphones to kind of keep them engaged in the content online. So the routine, I think, is very important. But just as a parent, just communicate with the teacher. Um, I think if you have any questions, reach out. You know, the, the teachers probably have questions, but it's great to hear from the parents to know that they are kind of our support. They're our help at home. You know, you're your kid's best advocate. So um, keeping that open line of communication and then just that like mutual support between the parent and instructor, I think is going to be super powerful to keeping students on task, engaged, um, and everybody has the same goal in the end here. I, I think that's a really great point. That idea of, I mean, we we've we know we've always been teamed up with with parents and and things like that, but I think now more so than ever. Um, like for example, I. I consider myself pretty well educated. Like I feel really confident in my ability to help my high school daughter with her science uh, questions and, and things like that. We have had so many tears and breakdowns with my fourth grader over, over math and, and other things like that. And, and I love them to death, but oh my gosh, this is, this has really been, been rough. And I think um, when it comes to, like as as a as a teacher, I would love to hear from parents. Like if I've got if I have a parent who says, "Hey, you know what? Kaylin's having a hard time with with this." Oh man, that's I I I'm on that. I can I can help out with that because I can send resources. I can I can uh, find other people. I can I can do all sorts of things. All right. Um, it's the it's the silence that that is is the most difficult. Um, as a, as a parent, um, I'm thinking, okay, anything you can send me is going to be, is going to be helpful because there's a, there's a lot of, of guilt going around right now where people are like, oh my gosh, I'm, I, I have my job that I may or may not have here right now, or I've, I've got to take care of my Financially, I've got to take care of my my uh, my family. I've got to take care of all of these things like that. And now I go on Facebook and I see that everybody is suddenly this amazing homeschooler, um, and that's so unfair to do to ourselves. So so I think parents, if there's anything that that we can do as teachers, let us know. That's our dream is to be able to have this open communication and to be able to to support one another. Right. And we can't really see like we would in a face to face classroom. Right. We can see if a light bulb's going off in our students or if they're confused. But when we're just putting the content out there and we don't know how it's being received on the other end, that parent coming in and telling us either affirming that, yes, this is this is going well, my students enjoying it or, hey, we're really confused over here. That's helpful. We don't know that students are going to speak up and and tell us that we can ask a hundred times, but um, we don't we don't know the answers that we're getting back. So I think that that is very important too. Well, as a parent, thank you both very much for those tips. As a former educator, I had it in my mind that this was going to be a little bit easier. And as you said, Dan, there are tears in the mornings. <laughs> Some of but them. Isn't mind. That, I mean, isn't that the case? I mean, we yeah. think we've got this all together, and all of a sudden, it's like, whoa! I th this is hard. This is really hard, and it's okay to admit that. And and if it's really hard, then I need to find some people that can can help me out with it. So rather than everybody trying to do it just on their own, we got to team up on this big time. Yeah, I had to email kindergarten teacher and ask what a 10 frame was for basic addition. I'm like, why can't we use our fingers? My daughter's yep. like, no, we yep. have to make our 10 frame. I'm like, oh my gosh, 
that Don't has just that described <laughs> my uh, the, my dining table perfectly of but but my teacher said to do it this way and I'm like I don't know what that means I don't so yeah I hear you I'm glad we're all in this together <laughs> So, Dan, you mentioned earlier compassion over compliance, and this last question is is for both of you, and it's thinking about educators during this time. What tips would you give an educator when it comes to learning and teaching from home? So, and I don't want this to be cliche, um, so, so feel free to say, you know what, Dan, that's really not, not helpful at all, but... Um, I think so many people thought that they were instantly going to have to become virtual teachers. And you guys do that fantastic. You're trained for that. You you have a set of skills that works fantastic and, and helps kids out in, in, in amazing ways. Um, but I think one of those who have taught virtually for a while understand that it takes a while to gain those skills. Um, and and virtual teaching is is not as simple as just digitizing what you would normally do in your in your classroom. So what we have to under, those of us who are coming from a brick and mortar type situation, we have to understand that it's it, it's not going to be something where oh man kids had to get our school building shut down and. Uh, then Monday, I'm going to be up and ready to go again. Um, you need to give yourself some grace. You need to give yourself some some room to learn this along the way. Um, and then as you are doing this, um, you need to uh, to be able to find those who are, are also doing this and work together on it. Um, Twitter, for all the junk that is out on Twitter, it's also an amazing place to go to, to find people who are in the same situation and, and find those people who aren't trying to sell you anything, but they're just sharing. They're, they're saying, hey, you know what? This was what I wanted to do and it was a total flop and this is what I'm going to do, do next time. And, and know that w- this isn't online, te- at least for my situation, this is an online teaching. This is crisis teaching. This is, we are in a completely different, um, completely different situation than uh, we've ever been and hopefully ever will have to be. Um, so at this point right now, I need to say, you know what, I'm going to set my, I'm going to set some uh, guidelines. This is going to be the time that I start working on it. This is going to be the time that I stop working on on things. This is when I'm going to look at my emails. This I'm going to give myself a little bit of a schedule, and then know that um, if if things fall apart, it's not because I necessarily did anything wrong. It's just because I'm new at this, and I'm going to try again tomorrow and try something else out. While hopefully getting some ideas from other people who are are experiencing the same thing I am as well. Absolutely, I think just sharing and collaborating. I mean, we we all are in the same situation. Um, And even the online instructors, I've been online full-time for six years and I was face-to-face for seven years before that. And it's still hard to wrap my head around doing this and helping students who are fully at home in this situation right now. So I think that collaborating, not reinventing the wheel here, there are a lot of resources out there um, I don't, Dan, I don't know if you're a member of the Keep Michigan Learning Facebook group, but there's a ton of educators in there and just sharing again, not selling anything just here. Here's something that's worked for me and maybe even something that's not working. Um, and then also just posing questions, you know, maybe you have an idea like, oh, I, I think this would be really cool to do this type of activity or uh, lesson. And where do I start? throw the question out there, you know, other teachers will come up with ideas, brainstorm together, you know, maybe we can make something really cool out of this. So I think that just kind of keeping it positive, light, not everything has to be Pinterest worthy, right? Um, 
in my first couple of years of online teaching, I would re-record every single video. If a kid made a sound or a dog barked in the background, you know, I would have to scrap 20 minutes and start over. But nowadays you just, you roll with it. You know, your kids want to see you, your humor, the mistakes, you know, just, just real life. And that, that's what this is. Um, so I guess, I would say embrace the challenge and embrace the opportunity. There could be some really neat things that come out of this, just in collaborating. Well, Alana and Dan, I could talk to you both all day long, but I know that you're very busy. And I just wanna thank you both for your time today and sharing your expertise with all of us. I'd also like to remind our viewers that there are some resources, um, some that Alana mentioned, some that Dan mentioned, up at our Michigan Virtual Resource page at michiganvirtual.org forward slash learning continuity. And then finally, if you have questions for any of our panelists or us here at Michigan Virtual, here's our contact information. And again, I just, I would really like to thank you both. It was so wonderful talking to you and just best of luck to both of you. Thank you. Thanks, Stacy. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week.